wonder whom she speaks to and what she is saying. Helen, go and fetch your sister. Yes, Mama! Elizabeth, come! Let's go inside! Entities wave by to Elizabeth as she is being taken inside. One entity initiates a conversation. Most of them only see us when young and pure, but when they grow, they do not see or interact with us anymore. Yes, it is no longer how it was in the beginning. We had such an amazing relationship with their ancestors. Are you seeing what I am seeing? What exactly? Look at this onion plant. It is not even as natural as we had made it. Sad. The crazy ones have polluted everything, making our work difficult. They're modified the genetic code of many of these plants. We have to fix some of these manipulations, as this is a garden where most of Elizabeth's food will come from. Mrs. Miriam likes to take most of her vegetables from her garden. Everyone needs to have a home garden and grow their own food. The crazy ones have polluted most of the food, which is available in their markets. Here, Queen Amalia is coming in. I can see Mr. Ndaya joined us as well for the Zero One Two class. So today, our class is basically on true African cultures. Hmm. Is the African culture losing its credibility? Hmm. I saw a few days ago when the, our brothers and sisters in Tanzania, and they were basically beating up the foreigners, the African foreigners, chasing them out of South Africa, or they've come to stolen their jobs. Is that how we live in African culture? African culture is, is based on Ubuntu. You know, when people come to your place, it's not because they lack, it's, it's because they are, they are lacking from where they're coming from. In African cultures, even when the Muzungus came, we received them, we gave them what to eat. You know, even though they profited from that to destroy us, but we ourselves were also not very wise we begin also egocentric. So African cultures is based on Ubuntu. We are the only people, the Bantu people in humanity that incarnates Ubuntu values. You know, we love from the heart. But we have lost that touch. 
and even the connection with our creator is not there anymore. True African cultures, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, it's a very, very important topic today. I would like to welcome Queen Amalia for joining us today. Queen Amalia, how are you doing over there in Israel? Thank you for joining us. I am superb. I have no complaints. I'm wow. blessed. I can see Good. you you dress like a you dress like a queen right there with your uh, uh, traditional attire. I can see. Yeah? Yes, here we are in the village of peace. I'm I'm excellent. Thank you. Thank you for joining I'm us. I'm blessed that I could be here. I'm so happy Thank that you. you're doing this. And as much as I can, I will support you. At Thank least you so much. From my heart. Thank you so much, Queen Amalia, for joining us today. Thank you so much. I'd like to start uh, with uh, Mopeli Rampeta. Mopeli, what does African culture mean to you? I know we have so many countries in Africa, different tribes with different traditions and different beliefs and customs. But when you think of African culture, Mopeli, what are your thoughts? What is an African culture to you? And what is culture? If you can just define culture and then African culture. Mopeli Rampeta. Um, yeah, thank you. I'm still here. Um, basically, what um, African culture is to me is staying true to our roots, I think. Doing things how our ancestors used to do them back then. Staying, tr staying, staying true to, to everything they used to do back then. The way they lived and the way they did things. And I believe if we, if we stay true to that, um, to this modern day, I think everything will still be okay. Hmm, very interesting. I think you, you, you are from Lesotho, right? Which, which, uh, which tribe are you from in Lesotho? Um, we have clans here, not tribes. Oh, you have clans? Great, great. Yeah, which clan? Mufuking, Mufuking clan. Mufuking clan. Yes. Oh. Yes. What is one thing about your clan that you, if you feel it's, it's so, that really means so much to you? And what, what one culture do you practice there that really means a lot to you? Um, I think uh, the most interesting thing is that uh, we're known as very clever people compared to oh. other clans. Yeah, wow. very clever people. Yeah. And I see it reflecting in a lot of things, actually. I think it's, it's very true. Um, each and every culture has, has that strong point, and I believe ours is that one, being very clever. Wow, wow. What kind of food do you guys eat? Like, what's your staple food, like the most common food that you eat there? In your clan, it's maize. maize. Maize, you make it like yeah, uh, like maize. dough in like fufu, or do you? How do you make it? Yes, um, we can cook it as it is, or uh, grill it. Sometimes we even make it meal and meal, maize meal. Wow, that's impressive, yeah. brother Mopeli. Thank you for that, yeah. brother Mopeli has told us about his culture in. Lesotho, what a beautiful culture. Thank you so much, Brother Mopeli. Uh, we have Mr. Ndai has joined us. Mr. Ndai is from Zimbabwe. Okay. She's a Shona. Mr. Ndai, what uh, really impresses you more about uh, the Shona culture that where you're, where you're from in, in, Zim, in Zimbabwe? And, and what does African culture mean to you, Mr. Ndai? Hello? We can hear you, Mr. Ndai, yes. Yes, we can hear you, Mr. Ndai. Mr. Ndai, you there? Mr. Ndai, I can't hear you. Okay, Mr. Ndai, you can uh, try to come after. Uh, let's have uh, Brother Paolo. Brother Paolo is from uh, Italy, Ghana. Brother Paolo, what does African culture mean to you? And uh, something about your culture that you really... Mr. Ndai, let's have you after, Brother Paolo. Okay. Yeah, Brother Paolo, what are your thoughts on African culture? Um, to me, it means the connection with traditions and the past. Never forget the past and the traditions and keep connected the, uh, yourself to your roots. This is what, in my opinion, it means. Wow, that's amazing. And any culture, you said you're from Ghana, I think, huh? originally. Yeah. Yeah. Any uh, and any culture over there that really uh, impresses you so much uh, in your in Ghana? 
um the clothing oh yeah. the clothing yeah i like the, the colorful how colorful it is colorful how different is it from uh, the european clothes um very different because our clothes is very very as i say it's very colorful uh-huh. I, I, it's very much brighter colorful and which very much uh, symbolism you know everything has a meaning wow so it's not just there because it looks good but it has a meaning that is connected to the past and so uh, it's not just random wow that's impressive but paulo thank you so much brother paulo for telling us about your culture you know the african culture especially the clothing that we have in for example in ghana and many african countries that we call bubu you know the closed up cloth it was also it was a, it was basically our invention you know back in egypt but when the greeks came to to visit and the romans and the babylonians we basically used to wear clothes because then they used to live as savages and barbarians in the in the mountains just like animals but when they came to egypt they learned how to making of cloth in egypt they saw how we dressed because us we were fully covered completely but you know because they live in cold areas and their designer said okay let's just let's cut let's cut the the the, the bubu in the middle create some buttons to allow us to open it and close it and let's make the 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 the, the, the necktie huh? the, the the necktie or the 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 top to be a bit closed because uh, when 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 we close the button on top we can stay warm from cold so they took the idea of making clothes in egypt but today we think as if uh, white people are the ones that brought clothes to africa because they came later on to find us in the bushes after they had destroyed our lives but actually these ideas of cloth making came from us they only took it even the skirt that you see it was taken from our long robes and because they felt like they needed because their women are very they like to walk very fast and they walk with no rhythm with no with no you know nobility so they had to cut the, the cut the road they cut the dress to make it short into a skirt but the idea of all those came from africa they learned it from us you know so that's how rich our culture is but as if i to seek it um what is what does african culture mean to you but as if i yeah but as if i okay let's have mr nai mr nai yes but as if i okay Yes, Brazil. What does African culture mean to you? We get to you, Mr. Dai. It, it, it's been it's been a uh, quite a thorny issue for me because uh it, it's something that I, I've always despised and I feel bad right, that I have to say that. Really? But uh yeah yeah um I've always tried to divorce myself from everything African not that I'm anything other than african but um african culture for me is uh the way uh africans um or we as africans um live mm-hmm. um it involves how we conduct ourselves mm-hmm. it involves the food that we eat mm-hmm. it involves uh, how we tell our stories it involves how we laugh share uh, our wow. jokes and everything so it is it, just the way of life oh. entirety so to speak wow. so yeah yeah um wow. uh, however when it comes to what we believe that's the part that I was referring to that is so thorny for me cuz uh i've never wanted to explore more so as a result i've i've i don't know i i created uh, some some barriers between me and anything that will connect me with uh, the beliefs in the african culture so but what goes around comes around yeah i am uh, yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so now i'm open to it. that's what i'm going to say yes thank you so much brother for that uh, we, 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 we will have queen amali after this uh, mr ndai mr ndai yes mr ndai what does african culture mean to you mr ndai uh, 
Yes, hello. Audible? Audible. Okay, yes. Well, um, I find African culture very beautiful. Although from the country I come from in Zimbabwe, we we don't have that much deep roots in our culture anymore. We're very westernized. But from what I've seen from the countries around me, um, I would say I find African music very beautiful. You know, the drums and mm -hmm. the mbira and the marimba, which is what we play in my country. I'd say that's probably my favorite part of our culture in Zimbabwe. Wow. And the food, I find the food very amazing. It's healthy, it's um, colorful, it's tasty. So I guess the music and the food and the dress, I just, I, I find it all very beautiful. Wow, that's amazing, Queen. Queen Tendai for saying that. Thank you so much, Queen Tendai. Let's have Queen Amalia. Queen Amalia is in Israel at the moment. How is the African culture in the Hebrew community, Queen Amalia? Have you still, are you still maintaining those African culture values or do you think it has uh, disappeared over time, Queen Amalia? How is the African culture there in Israel, the Hebrew tribe? Well, we, we strive to keep it alive and living on a regular basis, knowing and understanding that it's different, according to different regions and different, you know, Ethiopian garments are not the same as Ghanaian garments, but, uh -huh, uh -huh. but we revere, that's the point, we revere, we have a lot of pride in, in what we as African people do, think, say, behave, our knowledge system and everything, so we hold it on in a very high regard. We we know that we have to um, protect from. Um, it? We have to protect, especially from the encroachment of the. He'll come back and get that encroachment of the the Western ideas. Absolutely, Queen. It's important, and, and, and you can know that people like me, we become the stalwarts, and, and as, it gets more and more diluted as we go along. Uh, the other generations, but it's, it's a, we're a work in progress. Wow, thank you so much, Queen, for that input. I hope that helps. Is that what you're asking for? Absolutely, absolutely. I understand uh, what you what you mean, Queen. Thank you so much. Uh, You're welcome, classmates. Just give me a few um, um, uh, thirty minutes to be able to do a short presentation of African culture, and then we'll be able to um, um, interact and be able to share a few things. So, you know, if you look at the pictures that I've shared here, we want to welcome Brother Frank Minga joining us today from Gevakta in Tanzania. You know, other people are looking for a way to restore us to African culture. We're seeing this every time on, on social media. Everyone has his or her own comprehension of African culture. We are working in a desperate manner, and this is good. What makes us happy, Zolabandu, is that uh, our conscience of African people is beginning to move slowly, slowly forward. Though we have not yet arrived, but we can see the effort of many Africans who are looking for solutions so we can be able to end the pain which is happening in our continents of Africa. Today we will try to be short and we'll speak to you on our, on, our, on our culture because we have seen that if we are not careful, the culture of Africa will lose its credibility because some of those who are speaking or teaching African culture do not know it well and they do not even know the sense of that culture. This is not to tease them, but to give them a little comprehension so they'll be able to work well. There's so much work. Waking up people, my dear brothers and sisters, it's very difficult. You know, today, many African people around the continent were exposed to Western education, education of foreigners, and they have been educated in the paradigm of the foreigners, and they have gone to high levels of degrees and PhDs and doctorates, so if you want to speak to these African people about African culture, you have to first understand their expertise well. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, suppose Brother Frank Minga is a scientist 
a world in non-scientists. He only understands the scientific language. If you want to speak to Brother Frank Minga about the science of African culture, if you don't understand the expertise of Brother Frank, it will be very difficult for you to teach him on African culture. Let me give you an example. Suppose, let's say, Brother Makumuli has a child and all of a sudden the child becomes an atheist. The child begins to believe, okay, there's no creator, all that is BS, it's nonsense. Now, if Brother Makumuli just says to his son, stop being an atheist, it's evil, don't from today, I'll punish you. That is not a solution for you to be able to move your child from that belief of atheism. What then do you have to do? You yourself, Bari Makumbuli, you have to enter into the foundation roots of atheism, understand this whole idea of being an atheist. Where does it birth from? You understand its roots and its foundation. You really study what your son seems to be believing. And then when you begin to speak and debate with your child, your child will begin to say, okay, my father has taken the time to understand what I believe in. And this is what he's trying to tell me. You may have a chance to, to save your child. So it's very, very important for you to understand what a person is or what they are in, in if you want to win them over to your side. This is the problem today. People who claim to be consciousness, they're trying to convince the Christians that Christianity is wrong for you. But sadly, they don't want to read the Bible to understand why do some people believe in the so-called Christianity so much, but they just stand up and say Christianity is wrong, it is evil, move away from it. No. If you want to convince a Christian that Christianity, that you believe of why Jesus is wrong, you have to enter, spend time, read and study what they believe in, understand it. So by the time you'll be debating with them, you will be credible. We don't just wake up and begin to say, okay, Islam is evil, Hindu is evil, without understanding the fundamental beliefs of these people. Suppose you see, uh, Ms. Barazivai, suppose you see a certain formula of or theory of mathematics is wrong and you want to convince the world of mathematicians in Rome, in America, in Europe, you want to convince them that this theory of mathematics is wrong if you do not know mathematics, you appear as a fool before them. What does it mean? It means you have to master mathematics first so you can convince a mathematician that that formula is following is wrong. Because when you come up before them, you don't know mathematics, you appear as a fool because you're trying to get involved with things that you do not master. It is very easy for a doctor who is awakened to wake up doctors who are asleep. But it's very difficult for an accountant who is awakened to wake up doctors who are asleep. Because the doctors can easily listen to somebody who is at their level. What does it mean? It means, suppose I want to teach spirituality to the Hebrew community where Queen Amalia is. If I do not know the fundamental of the Hebrew community and what they believe. I can never speak to them on that. I would rather maybe get Ms. Peleng or Brother Cabello to go and teach the Hebrew community because they know the fundamental beliefs of that community. But Paolo just, for example, he's a software engineer. He's, he knows about coding and Python and all this. If I want to convince him to understand spirituality, I have to use the languages that he understands softwares, downloading, Python, coding, decoding, all these things to be able to win them. So you can have an intuitive sense and a feeling on the inside that what you're trying to defend is good, but you have to learn the history of what you want to preach. You have to learn the historical context of that thing. How did it come about? How did people embrace it? How was it done? For example, colonialism. You cannot just wake up and start teaching colonialism. No, you have to understand the historical context of colonialism. You have to know the ins and the outs. So when you come to speak to people who are colonials, you can be credible before them. Today, 
my dear brothers and sisters, we are seeing that the godship of foreigners, it means the lifestyle of philosophy of Western people, it is not bearing a good fruit in the lives of people. They themselves, Europeans, for example, they are beginning to interrogate on the pertinence of their way of thinking. Nonetheless, it is not producing good fruits. Western education pollutes the environment. Western education pollutes the mind. Western education destroys the families, divides people, creates nuclear bombs, destroys water, pollutes the environment. Western education does so many evil things to the natural order. So, for, so, suppose, so suppose you as an African, if you're trying to bring the African culture to the table and say, listen, Western people, let's leave this way of thinking that you have been polluting the universe. Let's bring an African Ubuntu way as an alternative way of life. If you bring this proposition to the table, if you, your own concepts is not producing good fruits, people will not adhere or approach you. You speak of African unity, blah, 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 blah. The next thing, when Zimbabweans come to South Africa, you're killing them, killing them, practicing xenophobia. You speak of African unity and world unity and peace, but in Congo, for example, tribal differences. I just saw one video last time in Congo. Some people were moving from one area of Congo to the other. The others were saying, don't come this side. We don't want you. You eat dogs, blah, 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 blah. So you are speaking of African unity, but you yourself as Africans, you don't get along. It is very, very sad. My dear brothers and sisters. So, if you yourself, you are developing hate, jealousy, and separatism. You are preferring a white man who is coming from Europe uh, to help you than your own people who are living closer by you. You are in contradiction with your own teachings. Oh, yes. I remember when I was in secondary school, we clapped when the professor who was white came to teach us. But when our own professor, who is an African from Makerekere University in Kenya, came to teach us, we found it very difficult to listen to him. Ah, what does he know? Ah, what is this? So our own, we ignore them. But a person who's coming from a foreigner, we embrace them. We have a problem, my dear brothers and sisters of Africa. So what is true African culture? True African culture is how we place in our society and how we're going to work, our laws, our behaviors of how we see the world. So our culture of Africa, how we live, the behaviors that we establish, the language and the customs and the traditions, they all come from how we see the world. We design our families and our various ways of living and say, this is how we're going to do, this is what we're going to eat, this is what we're going to do to get money, to work, to we'll do this in marriage, depending on how we see the world. Because we'll say, okay, if we do this, we're going to call upon the love and the purity and the justice of our creator, and we'll be able to live in harmony with our families and our friends. So African culture of Ubuntu comes from the principles of how we see the world as Africans. That is why when you look into the world, we are going to see that a black person, an African, in the beginning lived in the world in the right way. We lived in peace. We knew the world and we knew ourselves. We built the world in the thoughts, in the words, and in the actions of the way we used to see the world in relation to our creator. And even though as Africans, we're not very much advanced in technology like we're seeing today, the metros, the airplanes, the cars, and all these things, even though they are polluting the universe, we did not create these things very fast. But even though we did not have these tech advancements, but the way we used to live among ourselves, we lived in love, we lived in justice, we lived in purity with our creator, we respected the environment. It means if someone came with a proposition to make an atomic bomb, would say, no, we cannot make this because we respect nature. We cannot destroy the environment to create an atomic bomb. 
So everything that we did in our way of praying or incantations or invocations, in our way of showing ourselves as a people, in our way of living with our mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, in our way of living with children, the togetherness of all these things is what we call the culture of Africa, the African culture. A wise man once said that uh, culture is the language of a people. For sure, language drives the moral values of a people. You know, me and my girlfriend, we like to watch Korean movies. You notice that in the Korean language, their entire culture is in their language. The principles of respect, the principles of, their, of how they believe as a people, it's all inscribed in their language. If you go to the Zulu, you notice that their culture is also in their language. The Igbo, same thing. If you go to Malawi, the Chichewa, the Chewa people, their culture is in their language. So culture is the language of a people. So that is why when the Europeans came for the very first, the first thing they had to do was remove the language and put their own language. Because they knew when they teach your children their language, immediately your children will understand their culture. Mr. Nde just said that in Zimbabwe, most people are westernized. What does it mean? They speak English. They believe in the western the culture because culture of English is in the English language. Same thing with French, same thing with Portuguese. Your ancestors that were shipped to the Caribbean and North America, they, when they arrived for the very first time, first of all, you removed your name. You came as uh, uh, Takudzwa, all of a sudden you became Miles Monroe. They give you Miles, and then your last name is Monroe, the name of your slave master. And then when you're among yourselves in the plantation, you cannot speak in your home language of Igbo or Shona. You had to speak English because they knew they had to erase your culture because they knew your culture is in your language. I used to get whipped in primary school for speaking Shona in class. So a woman, they knew this strategy that in the language of a people lies their culture. So culture is the humanity, the Kimuntu, and the Ubuntu of the Bantu people. Wherever they're living, they're expressing this in the principal instrument of language. That is why when we see in the history of black people that began first in Timansi, in Timansi means the heart of Africa, about 37,000 years before the time of the Pisces, up to when it went to Kingipiti in Egypt, around 15,000 years before the time of the Pisces. And then today we see that black people walked in peace at a certain period of their life where they had the culture that was showing the world the light of the creator. When we say light, it means love, purity, and justice. We combine it together to mean light. Okay? So the true culture of black people came to a decline. Listen very careful. The true culture of black people came to a decline around 1,000 to 2,000 years before Master Yeshua. It means around 1,000 to 2,000 years before Master Yeshua. That is when the culture of African began to be polluted when we were in egypt for example our women never walked with their top exposed we never exposed our body like you see in these cultures in africa where and women go to a certain place and they have exposed their bodies all those are cultures that came later but a woman protects and covers her body so many of the African cultures that best 1,000 years after we left Egypt, they became polluted. You know? They became polluted with certain ideas that our ancestors moved away from the, from, the, from the laws of God. So see where we walked in pain as the great exile is mentioned to the wilderness in Congo. So when we came into the heart of Africa, when we left Egypt, we came to Canaan, the areas of Congo and Southern Africa. We did not come to the heart of Africa because we were having a good life in Egypt and did not want to, okay, we did not come to the heart of Africa because we had a good life in Egypt, no. 
Okay, and then God said, okay, move from there. Moses, Moses, take them out. No, it's because we did so many evil things in Egypt. We began to intermarry with foreigners. We lost our culture. We lost our values or spirituality. That is why we had to leave Egypt. We intermarry with pagan nations while we're living in Egypt and our leaders began to worship idols and led the people into perdition. So, one thing that I need to mention, my brothers and sisters, today is if you want to know what kind of a person that you are, you need to have what we call self-critic. I see many Africans don't like self-critic. Everything that you do, you think you're right. Everything that you do, you're good. You don't have a self-critic. Hmm? We came into the heart of Africa because we were chased by the Greeks and the Babylonians and the Arabs. Our ancestors forgot the good ways of life that built Egypt, the good ways that gave the wisdom of mathematics in geometry and also medicine and various things that the West used today, for example, to develop their nation. So we need to have a self-critic that we walked in a bad way. So when we arrived basically in the heart of Africa, we wanted to start again to build another, another civilization. But these evil people came again. You remember we arrived in the heart of Africa in the 690 AD. We began to build the small kingdoms, you know, kingdoms of Mali, Ghana, Carthage, Wenamutapa, Zulu, Great Zimbabwe. But again, you know that um, in the 14th century, they came again to colonize us and they took over Africa in 1885. They divided Africa like a cake. Like a cake. And uh, they colonized us for 500 years from the 14th century up to the 1960s, almost 480 years when colonization. So today, the West is dominating us. Why? Because, first of all, we have evil people among us, the Africans, who are sending us to them. So we will not build Africa if we place ourselves on a pedestal and we are not criticizing ourselves. Let's be honest, we walked in a bad way. Even the elders that God sent us, they walked in the wrong way. You know of the exile, the stories of the exile, how many kings began to betray one another. You know what happened between the kings of the, the sons of David, Solomon, and then Absalom. You know about Jeroboam and Rehoboam. All those are African people, even though those were not their names, but they were changed because of colonization. You know what happened. Read, if you read the Bible, you see from when, from Moses, when he arrived in Canaan, up to Malachi, all oh, the rubbish which was happening over there. Fathers, um, children sleeping with wives of their fathers. It was very catastrophic, you know. So I know it is very difficult to understand as well as to, but we'll continue to speak to you up to when you will listen. If you will not listen to us, the situation that you encounter will bring you back to our words. You will run away from it. You might try to interpret it differently, but you encounter bad situations due to your own strategic areas that you will make. Because you think that everything that is born in black people is right, is the perfect way. All those that are teaching African black traditions or customs, they are teaching it in the right way. No, those voodoo practices of, for example, African voodoo practices, some of those practices are not practices of light. Hmm? You know that in the Old Testament, because we lost the creation with, with Ra, we lost the connection with God the Creator, and we began to receive negative energies from Ra, which we thought were positive, and it forced us to begin to sacrifice animals. An animal is an innocent creature. The animal has not done anything to you. Why would you sacrifice an animal to wash away your sins? Why do you have to take a chicken to somebody to kill it for you to be able to get an opportunity in life. No, why would the creator, it's not logic, why would the creator kill an innocent lamb for you, for your stupidity? So we began to enter into voodoo practices and you think those voodoo practices that we entered into were practices of light. So I agree with Brother Zivai, there are some African cultures which are not cultures of light. So when we're speaking about returning to African cultures, we need to have a spirit of discernment are we going to return into killing animals of voodoo? Are we going to return into cultures where we have to speak also about, about polygamy? Hmm? Queen Amalia, we had a long session on polygamy with Queen Amalia on this. Can polygamy still work for us as Africans? Hmm? We saw, for example, 
in Congo Kingdom, how polygamy destroyed some of our kingdoms because the first wife's son was killed by the second wife's son who was influenced by the Europeans and they, they, they took that son to Europe and made him the first priest. He came back to Congo, he opened the first church and that is where they decolonized our mind in those churches of theirs. So we have to think about these things. Half brothers and half sisters, can that work? So when we speak about returning to true African culture, we speak about let's return to African cultures, let's embrace our cultures. Which culture are we talking about? The culture of sacrificing our babies? Hmm? The culture of uh, women exposing their bodies oh, because they are virgins? It's a culture of the Zulus. They have to expose their bodies open to the public because they are virgins. And men can see those things free. Should we go back to such a culture? I saw in Kenya some cultures where the woman exposes their complete nakedness in front of people. Are we going to return to those kind of cultures? No. We have to understand what then is true African culture. It is culture of spirituality, culture of purity. Any culture that does not display love, that does not display purity, it is not an African culture. I'm sorry. A culture where if your brother dies, you take his wife. So you, your whole life, you just sit on the table. You're waiting for your brother to die because you say, when my brother dies, I'll take his wife. Even some people who kill their brother because they know they'll take the wife. My brother's wife is very beautiful. Are we going to return to such cultures? So we have to think carefully on this, my dear brothers and sisters. What African cultures can we, are we going to return to? And we have to measure it with purity and love. If your culture is not showing love in the society, I'm sorry, it is not an African culture. It is a polluted culture. If your culture is not showing purity, that is not a culture that we can adopt. So not every culture that you see in Africa today are cultures that we had in Egypt, in Ethiopia, in Kush. No, some cultures have come because of our falling before the creator. So we have to have discernment. When we build a new community, we have to say, okay, this no, this yes. Today, we teach our children in schools where we mix boys and girls in the same school. You're mixing boys and girls in the same school. Boys have the masculine energy. Girls have the feminine energy. How can you teach those two energies the same thing? No. In African culture, we had what we call schools for girls and schools for boys. Yes, we can have them in the same class to by the time they get to the age of 14. At the age of 14, we separate girls who go to girls' schools because girls have the feminine energy. They have to learn femininity. Boys have to go to masculine schools boys' schools where they will learn how to be, they will learn more about the masculine energy. Not every occupation is for everybody. No! We have entered into so much stupidity of the West. A woman is a policeman, a woman is a soldier, a woman is a boxer, a woman is a footballer. All this kind of pollution. A woman is swimming, swimming pools, swimming competitions. Well, a woman's body is full of essentiality. It needs to be protected. It needs to be hidden. Hmm? A woman has femininity. A woman does not need to be lifting weights in the gym, building muscles. No, there's so much honor in being a woman. A woman, you hear a woman soldier jumping the, the, the levels. A woman boxer punching people. No, that, that, is family, that, is, that is masculine activity. So depending on the understanding of the activities, you depict the roles. You have, for example, let's say, for example, Mopeli has a daughter and a son. You hear Mopeli saying, oh, gender equality, democracy, they are all the same. No, your daughter is not the same as your son. Your son has the masculine energy. Your daughter has the feminine energy. So when it comes to anything like counseling, taking care of the house, cleaning, cooking, that is the responsibility of your daughter. But when it comes to physical things, climbing the trees, going to the bush, going to the farm, or fixing the tire of the car, climbing on top of the roof, that is the duty of your son. You can't ask your daughter to climb the tree, to pluck some mangoes. No, 
you insist more on your son because the man is the builder physically but the woman is more of the guider so we can we have to we have to reorganize our society in terms of this principle so we have to return to our african cultures by respecting the african principles so my dear brothers and sisters this is just a small presentation on african culture not every african culture out there is truly an african culture just observe any culture see if it's producing love see if it's producing purity if it is not then it has to be thrown away so we'll look at what we can keep not everything we'll keep no we shall look at what we can keep and we shall look at what we can not keep and not everything that the west do is evil there's some things we can learn from them but culture is when you embrace your own yes you learn from other people but you take their ideas to uplift your own not to replace no not to replace no i gave you the story in the beginning when the whites came to egypt they saw us wearing our boobs all closed up the engineer said okay let's take it to europe this idea but let's open let's create buttons to open up let's put a collar on top to close you see so they have taken what's yours but they have adapted it into their environment because it's very cold they want to stay warm so when you take something from someone else and replace it with what is yours that is stupidity but when you take something from someone else and you use it to even reinforce yourself it's really amazing today africans are taking noodles and eating noodles everywhere as if you invented noodles your own ugali you're forgotten about it you come back home with your wife you just order chinese baby let's order let's order some chinese you cannot make your own matemba your own kapenta in your house and ever since you've been cooking you just make tomato and soup and soup you can't make new ways of cooking your meals hmm? that's what today we have mexican restaurant indian restaurant because they are engineers they are they are food specialists have been able to put wisdom and how to make different types of food but in africa the only thing you eat is vegetables and ugali and sujo and meat on top you cannot be creative even on how you make your food there's a food stuff in congo called kwanga we make it from cassava up to now 100 years we just eat kwanga like that in leaves we cannot modernize it hmm? if you take it to these conferences where there are white people they say it is smelling your kwanga is smelling you see so african cultures has to be cultures that are aligned with love purity and justice and we have to be proud of our cultures but we also need to modernize it we have to modernize our cultures i like watching the movie black panther you saw how they still maintain their culture even though they had all those technological advancement i was watching the movie black panther with my indian friends they couldn't believe it they couldn't believe that africa because for them africa is just a poor place poverty we cannot have anything advancement the chinese when when the chinese were watching black panther in the cinema they said that it's like they're watching a horror movie they couldn't believe that that is africa that is the africa which has been hidden from us you know so my dear brothers and sisters we have to be able to think on african cultures not everything that came from africa is right many of it has been polluted so i'd like to open the floor let's have a uh, queen amalia first uh, queen amalia what are your thoughts and um, do you believe that everything that is born in africa is right or are there some places we need to make some changes huh what are your thoughts uh, queen amalia okay hold on just a Yes, Queen. I'm here. Um, I'm here. I'm here. Yes, Queen. What's your question? One more time. Yeah. What do you, What are your thoughts on African culture? Is everything that is in African culture right in terms of love and purity, or do you feel that there are some things that we can, we have to remove from African cultures that is not right? I think that there's 
right now, it's, uh, it's a lot going on, and some of it is in order, and some of it is not. So, but that's that's because um, because basically of the intrusion of other cultures and imposition, and even to the extent where they would cause us to be have enmity with each other because of, of the difference. That's what I was saying before, you know, the expression, you, like people, you have agri agrarians, you know, you have agrarian, uh, you have different lands and plains. The people, mm. even in the a far region of Ethiopia, where it's dry, the Afar people, they say, is a very fierce people. We had a great time with them. But then you have the pastoral land and everything in between. So it's man and it's environment. So you have differences. But the key is where the, the collective mindset begins and ends. In some cases, you know, the proliferation of individualism is what is the enemy. That's what the enemy is. And so it, 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 it's still present. My belief and my feeling is that innately, we all have been blessed with the spirit of good and right. Mm -hmm. Innately. We were put here to live, and that's it. But because we chose not to, you know, out of curiosity, made choices, then we did some things that caused us to move into another cycle, the death cycle. Mm. So mm. in the death cycle, you have all of the things that are not, but in the life that are proliferating life. So our quest is to do as I see you do relative to, we're not, not ignoring the negative, but we're pushing the positive. In order for us to get to this point, we used to say, if the, what we say, push the positive. Mm -hmm. In the struggle, in the 60s, in the 50s, and 60s, and 70s, push the positive. Mm -hmm. Well, and Krumah said, in order to overcome the negative, you had to have a preponderance of positive. So this is the thing that you have to keep doing until, as you whittle away at the things where the discrepancies, where the negotiations, where the sit down, but, but the choice to, to, to resolve things in our eyesight is not with a pop gun, a gun, a taser, a rifle, uh, what? none of that. That's not the way. The way to do it is you're supposed to sit down and reason together. Mm. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Does that answer your question? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Pina I'm Pina. in the ballpark. <laughs> I understand. Thank you. Wow, that's a beautiful okay. input, Pinamalia. Come together. I wow. hope. I pray. Wow, thank you for that. I can see if Brother Frank Minga has joined us as well from Tanzania. Brother Frank Minga, uh, what are your thoughts? Are all African cultures uh, representing the right way to live, or are there are some changes that we can make in African cultures? Brother Frank Minga. Hello. Yes, Brother Frank. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, the topic, it was uh, so interesting. Especially, I become so interested uh, uh, with uh, one of the words you say that when you see uh, something is better from other side of the culture, mm -hmm. you can just uh, uh, take some principle, then you plant on your culture. Mm. Instead of repressing, I was so interested for that job. So it is nice. And uh, what I wanted just to add is that uh, yes. you talk to the truth. That uh, you cannot, uh, we cannot kill the culture which is harmful. 
which is the bring a uh, negative even to our life for instance you take you, know, you talked on uh polygamy you talked on sacrificing animals and uh even our children which we said that it is you said that it is not a, a good culture we must secure the purity culture hmm. which will set us free and will make us to move forward and even to rebuild it is uh in that uh, we as africa hmm. we are facing with the uh, uh, problems of uh, chronic chronic regas is one of the challenge which is facing us for instance i can just take an example when i was uh, a, a child mm-hmm. in, uh, in my family we didn't uh, no we didn't uh, have we didn't we have been using a uh, hand to take a food uh but the the moment i come to i, I started just to use a spoon but one day i started just to make a research this is spoon mm is it a good equipment to use i just uh, put one of the spoon to our family there mm. so we have been using so i find that it come a time when one the, the spoon which i put there it come it is uh, it become so sharp mm. i said so where are the material some of the material now i don't see from this spoon where are they going So it means that we are eating some of the iron eh yeah? mm. so i realized that uh, there are some culture our uh, some of the foreign culture which we adopt it is harmful to our life and to our future life mm. so we better uh, choose the best one we plant to our culture for instance when we have been using the uh, the 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 plant it was just a plant just to take a food so why don't we improve from there mm-hmm. we can make some improvement why we decided to use to adapt to using naya and then then now we are just being affected without knowing so what uh, my suggestion is that you are in you talk to the reality that let's stand choose the culture with the principle which is uh, it it tells the purity mm-hmm. that's why one day i was reading the history i find that even our culture especially in west africa mm-hmm. they had the they are believe they went they they have some places where they've been believing so wherever they want to get a, a reader they went there just to ask that now we are preparing to get uh, another reader which reader is going to uh, to read us mm-hmm. but uh, at the same time they had some of the uh, some of the of the belief there which it was there just to check mm-hmm. the purity of the reader the purity mm. of the reader so when they when they found that this uh, reader is uh, some of they don't see some the sign of the purity mm. they said that you we are not a good reader according to our our belief where we believe so in my suggestion is that uh, let's uh, select mm. take some things for which is uh, good from our uh, from outside uh, from from other culture plant to us but oh. let's improve our mm-hmm. our our culture let's improve our, our original culture. culture our original culture so that wow. we can know because now we are taking things then without knowing that we are we are at the future we are going to distort our life just so thank you for that Thank you so much brother Frank. That was very very yeah. very critical brother Frank. Thank you so yeah. much brother. We will be coming to the end of our session in the next 7 minutes. I just want to get an input from the other classmates over here just in a minute each uh what what are your inputs um, on the on the culture and is every african culture out there really something that we can adopt or there are some cultures we have to drop um brazivai to ck and then we we'll have um uh, but uh, but jesse and mr and then also by makumbuli brazivai what are your thoughts 
Thank you, brother. Um, uh, I think um, not all we consider culture needs to be adopted. Um, like you have been presenting, but um, there have been some pollutions and distortions. So I think um, now um, <clears throat> we will have uh, a hard time um, getting to choose what we will find uh, socially acceptable. I don't know if, should I call it socially or, but um, I don't want to bring the issue of dynamic in, in, in all the, this that we're saying, but we want to go back, I think, with the guidelines of uh, purity, mm -hmm. love like you imagine. So I think if we stick to the principles, then we should be able to, to determine or we should be able to, mm. to distinguish between what sh should be part of our culture and what should not be part of our culture. So I think it is the principles that we need to um, 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 get a hold of and then everything else will be determined from those principles as guidelines. Wow. Thank yes. you so much for that, Brother, brother Zivai. Very powerful. Yeah. Mr. Ndai, what are your thoughts? And then we'll have uh, Brother Makumbuya and Brother Jesse, and then we'll end our session for today. Thank you, Brother Yeshiba, but for joining us as well. Mr. Ndai, what are your thoughts, Mr. Ndai? Are all African cultures something that we need to embrace or we can, we have to get rid of some, Mr. Ndai? Hello, am I audible? Yes. Um, yes, thank you so much for that lesson. Um, I don't think all African cultures are something we need to embrace because I believe um, some of them came in when we got <coughs> lost or when we were influenced by the West, such as the dressing. Um, I believe that, you know, as Africans, as people who are meant to be rooted like spiritually, I don't, I think modesty is one of like the important traits we should have in our cultures. And I think the way we dress in our cultures or that we used to dress, like the picture that's right there on the screen right now, as the man is dressed and as the women who still in South Africa, those cultures exist and Kenya where women have their breasts out and wear these open skirts, I believe that that doesn't agree with the kind of culture we should be following, purity, you know, it doesn't agree with purity as it should be. Um, but there are also many good things in our cultures that I believe we should embrace, like the morals and the values. Um, mm. I believe those are all really good things and the food, you know, um, the health um, behind it and everything. So, yes, that's what I wow. think. Thank very, you. very profound. Thank you so much, Miss Miss, Miss Mitendai. Quinton die, and then we'll have uh, Brother Jesse, and then we'll end with Brother Makumbuli. Brother Jesse, anything you can take off from your culture in Ghana that you think is not pure? Uh, yes, Brother Jesse. I think some things uh, that we do, like uh, the sacrifice and all that stuff related like this, we could just uh, put it apart and start picking up some things that are, are more uh, pure and you know don't um, you know are more pure and oh. have the have the purity that we need to grow so spiritually and you know as a nation too because some things are just not for us, uh, just pollution, and we don't need them. Wow. Thank you so much, brother, Jesse, for that input. Rema Kumbuli, what are your thoughts before we end our session for today? Thank you for those who are watching us live on YouTube. You can also send your questions or your comments as well. But Rema Kumbuli, what are your thoughts, Rema Kumbuli? Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. I think... <clears throat> Many of the input has already been said by my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> but I, I just want to to just put a suggestion. I think automatically the bad ones have to be taken out, and the good ones has to be upheld or elevated. 
But my concern is on the implementation process because you see we have initiation centers in the society. We have the education, uh, we have uh, the church, and we have uh, mm. the media. Mm. So, uh, like for the school, I have never seen a school right now that is a cultural school, you know. So those are the things that we can help, that can help us. I think try to to if you had s- such kind of things in a society whereby where I am at the moment, you know, there should be some elderly men in the community. Those are that are wise, you see, mm-hmm. that we are supposed to initiate people with knowledge, not initiation like sacrificing doing what, but the way we get we got initiated into these schools that we are going to currently, you see. Mm. So if culture is important, but the question should be, how does that culture pass down to the next generation? How do we pass it down to the next generation, you see? Very profound. So we need to look on, the, on that area. We need to, to actually have some cultural schools the same way religion, religion featured into the current curriculum system, like here where I, I live, you find that uh, there are some there, there is religious education. It's, it's a subject, you see, it featured in the curriculum of the school. But, but like where I come from, I used mm. to learn laws, which is my language, you see. But when you look at what I was learning there, it's, it's, it was a replica of what I was learning again in English. There was some, we are reading some fictitious books. See, you see, there's nothing of value that you, that, that I was learning. It's, it's, it's more like passing time, you know. So I think the, the good cultures, we must take them up. But the, the real battle should be on implementation. So we, we must get in touch with the community leaders, the traditional leaders. We give them some insight on how we can, you know, preserve and actually uh, initiate the next generation with our cultures. Because like Sister Tendash said, Medi- something like medicine values and morals, you see. Like medicine here in Africa, people heal themselves using the herbs. Mm. But who is going to tell you that it's such kind of a herb treats headache, this kind of a herb, if you have a running stomach, you get this. How, how are you getting the, such kind of knowledge? Mm. If there is a no proper channel where you can go and be initiated into knowing such kind of things, you get the point. Mm. Wow. Thank so, you so much. Very, very That is my approach. contribution. Thank you so much, sure. Bayama Kumuri. That was powerful. That was powerful. Thank you so much, Bayama Kumuri, for joining us today, Queen Amalia. Mother Frank also made such an amazing point, and Queen Tendai as well, Brother Jesse as well, Brother Zivai. Thank you, everyone, for watching us li- live on YouTube. I can see Mr. Mitri has been watching us live on, on YouTube from Organic African Paradigm. We had an amazing session with Mr. Mitri last time. So thank you for joining us again. We want to wish you guys to have a beautiful week ahead. Look at your various African culture. Identify <clears throat> them with purity. Identify them with love. If they are really showing those values in your lives, then you'll be able to make your own decision as well. Because remember, if um, your culture is not really reflecting purity, it is something that you need to question. And it's not because your ancestors have been practicing that for hundreds of years. Maybe they have been practicing foolishness. Yes. Let's give, let's, let me give you an example. Suppose you introduce something now, eh? uh, but as if I into your family, you say from today we'll be praying to the moon. hundred years from now, your children will be praying to the moons. Yes, because they will pick it up. Okay, our ancestors, if I told us to pray to the moon, so we'll be praying to the moon. So even if you introduce something false, and because you have put it, inscribed it into your family and they are practicing for hundreds of years, it becomes their entire life and tradition. Does it mean what they have been practicing for hundreds of years is true? No. You see? So we tend to say, okay, it's our culture because... It's something that's been happening for a long time. Maybe, it, maybe it's something wrong which has been happening for a long time. Hmm? 
So we have to be have to have this kind of questions. So when I build this sort of the community, we shall raise this kind of situation. There are things that we cannot allow. There are things that we have to put away, which does not have some sense of purity. We will not leave our young girls of fourteen years old to have their to walk around with the in a group with their tops exposed because we're saying it's part of a culture. No, we cannot allow. There are some cultures in Africa where brother and brother, brother and sister get married. Is that the right? culture mm -hmm. so there are some cultures where when it's when 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 the wife of a brother dies the husband the brother of a brother dies the brother takes the wife you know those kind of cultures so there are some cultures we have to look into and say okay we, we have to move away from this so thank you so much everyone for joining us today have a productive week we love you so much for those who are watching us live on youtube we'll have our next class next sunday Please participate in our projects as well. So have a beautiful week ahead. Be productive and also uh, be a blessing to your families and your friends until we meet you next time. Thank you, Brother, Brother Frank. Thank you, Brother Makumuli, Brother Jesse. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today for the class. And you can watch the class live on, um, on, on, on YouTube again if you want to watch it again. And also please go through the previous classes. Uh, it's very, very important. Uh, it's only those that who really participate in the Zorabantu classes are the ones that will benefit from the Zorabantu community. Because we cannot just build a community with people who are bringing their own things. Yes, but you need to go through this process to understand the paradigm, to understand who are Africans, who are Africans. Huh? who are Africans, you have to understand this. You need to understand the world. You need to understand the, the 13 big families. You need to understand that Africa is only seen as a reservoir of primary material. So how are we going to then organize ourselves to change the order? Because they only see as a place to come and take. We spoke about this in our previous classes. You have to be able to understand the imposter. You have to understand your mission as an African diaspora. We spoke about this in lecture four. So it's really, really important, my dear brothers and sisters of Africa. And I love you all. Have a beautiful, productive week ahead uh, until we meet next time. But uh, Frank Minga, thank you so much. I'll be getting back to you. Have a beautiful week ahead. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. Mom, look at Elizabeth. I always wonder whom she speaks to and what she is saying. Helen, go and fetch your sister. Yes, Mama. Elizabeth, come. Let's go inside. Entities wave by to Elizabeth as she is being taken inside. One entity initiates a conversation. Most of them only see us when young and pure, but when they grow, they do not see or interact with us anymore. Yes, it is no longer how it was in the beginning. We had such an amazing relationship with their ancestors. Are you seeing what I am seeing? What exactly? Look at this onion plant. It is not even as natural as we had made it. Sad, the crazy ones have polluted everything, making our work difficult. They're modified the genetic code of many of these plants. We have to fix some of these manipulations, as this is a garden where most of Elizabeth's food will come from. Mrs. Miriam likes to take most of her vegetables from her garden. Everyone needs to have a home garden and grow their own food. The crazy ones have polluted most of the food, which is available in their markets. <laughs>
Je vais essayer de me libérer de vous, vous les rebelles contre moi. 